Okay, so I'm always amazed at how they end up looking a lot bigger, but what we're gonna do now is we're going to do the waist and you'll see how it comes together. We turned it inside out and now we're gonna open, we just do a quick press here on this side. That's called opening the seam. And then this side. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go back, I guess, to the table. Okay, so I'm actually gonna stay here at the ironing board, so if you guys, you guys would go back to your tables, but I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna need to press it again anyway. So I'm going to get my seam or my sewing gauge, and because I made it a little bit bigger because I wanted to make sure we had enough um, allowance instead of doing a quarter inch pressing right now, I mean, uh, we are gonna actually do a half inch. So you wanna line it up to a half inch and then you're gonna press it to, you're gonna press it down for the first fold. We're actually not gonna sew this fold. So I'm just taking it like this. I'm actually gonna do it a little bit more because mine looks so big. I'm gonna actually do an inch because I think we have enough room for that. You guys do a half inch and I'm gonna come around to help you guys anyway. So. I'm going to do a whole inch as to pressing because when I looked at it, it, it definitely looked like we should have actually cut off this part, the salvage. So I'm doing it. I'm glad we didn't, but I'm doing a whole inch. So do you see how I'm pressing it? Then I'm going to flip it. It's just like you're making a fold. So if your fabric didn't have that salvage part salvage is the part that is was actually on the bolt that we should have cut off um this actually is better because it allows new new sewers beginner sewers to not have to fold with such a small amount a quarter inch is hard so we're just folding it's about an inch so now that i did it it kind of naturally falls but every so often, go ahead and just measure to make sure it's still an inch. Okay, so I just pressed it all the way around. So now, they still, I'm still going to do it again, but I'm going to fold it now an inch and a half. So do you see why we had so much extra fabric? So an inch and a half is one and a half. This one matters a lot more because we want to make sure it's one and a half. You might say, why in the world? Well, because you're going to have to put an inch, your one inch elastic in that section. And if you cut it, if you do it too, too narrow, you'll have such a hard time putting the elastic in there. Now, if, if our irons at school have steam, and I think they do, they're newer, you want to push the steam. And if we need to add water, we can, because that's really going to press it nicer. Okay. Notice I did not put pins. I'm not putting pins because we're ironing. So if I put pins, and every so often you want to check it. Oh, that's a little bit too much. So we want to check it that it's one and a half. And then we want to check it that it's one and a half. Okay. That looks better. And then we're gonna keep going. One and a half. See how our seam gauge is already marked the one and a half line? So that's good. If you're gonna err on one and a half or less, you wanna err on a little bit more, not less than one and a half. See how it's a little bit more than one half? That's, that's not gonna hurt us. Okay, now before you sew, before you sew, you see how it's becoming a little bit better? Before you sew, it's a good idea to just check it again. Just to make sure that there's no section of this that you went too small. Because if you did, when you get ready to put your inch inch um, 
elastic, it's not going to work. Okay, so I think I'm good now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the sewing machine. And what I'm going to have you guys do is turn it inside out because it's going to be easier to sew on this line. And you guys are going to start sewing about, let's measure it, about an inch after this, the seam. Okay, so now I need to, actually I would use my pins and I would mark off, just because you guys are beginners, I would mark off a section. I would just mark off a section that you're not gonna sew. <clears throat> that is going to be the part where we put our elastic in. That's, that's the section where I put our elastic. So I would just start here. Actually, you know what? We should usually start. Let's start actually here. Yeah, let's start on that one so we're gonna leave the opening here. You always wanna start on that seat, uh, on this part, because it keeps it more in line. The front part, okay. So now, we're going to, this is the trickiest part, because you're gonna actually wanna sew right on the line on the edge. If you get too much over here, you are not gonna have room for your elastic. Can you pause it or something? Go. Okay, so let me show you that one more time, um, because I should have been clear. Okay, so this elastic is gonna have to actually go into this section and then be fed all the way through there. So you can see that the thickness of it, it doesn't give you a whole lot of room. If you start sewing this way, you're not gonna be able to get your elastic in and that's gonna to lead to a lot of frustration and a lot of seam ripping. So it's really, really important that you give yourself a nice gap here before it so that you can fit that in easily and then that you sew right on this edge. Do not sew over here. So I'm putting it under and I'm going to line it up right there. And a great way to figure out how to line it up is to kind of put your needle down and see, is that pretty good? Looks straight to me. And you're gonna have to start sewing. Now this is tricky because there's no line. There's no 10 and 15. Your guide is actually that line. So I'm just sewing with the left, with the line being my guide as to making sure I'm, I'm coming really close to the edge, but not over it. And every time I might come close to it, I'm gonna make sure to push back over. It's again, it's, it's a tricky, tricky part to do, but there's really no other way to do it. So see how close I am to the edge? I don't have to worry about pins. And actually, for your sake, I'm going to show you going slower. That's what you need to do. You just need to go really slow because even if it takes you a full six or seven minutes to get around it, this will lead you about an over an hour of seam ripping when you get ready to take it out if you did it wrong. Okay, because I'm, cause I'm experienced and I'm videotaping, I'm going to go a little bit faster. Go. Okay, so now we're at the end. I mean, we're almost at the back. We've almost come all, we've gone all the way around. And then sometimes it bubbles up, you just have to lay it flat again. But you're gonna keep going on the end, okay? All the way, and then remember when we get to our pins. I don't know why it bubbles up sometimes, and that's just what it's gonna do. It's sure it's gonna, you're gonna have that experience as well. And that's okay. So now I'm going to backstitch because remember I wanted to leave a section for the elastic. Okay, so I left a nice big section for my elastic. Better to do too much than too little. And then we're gonna cut it. I take out my pin and we've just gone all the way around the whole entire part. Okay, I need to go get my safety 